So thanks everyone for coming out. My name is Ash Oro and I'm going to be presenting an opening discussion about how to cash flow your cryptocurrency. Um, for all the note takers in the crowd, this entire presentation will be available for download at the end. So feel free to lift your eyes up every once in a while. Um, so just to give me an idea on who is here, currently who owns any type of cryptocurrency? Maybe Dash or Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin. All right. Keep your hands up. Who has owned it for more than three months? Six months? One year? Two years? Three years? All right. Thank you. So let's get into it. <laughs> All right. So who am I? So my name is Ash Oro. I'm a student of Austrian economics or free market laissez-faire economics. Um, I've got bachelor degrees in computer and electrical engineering and worked as a programmer and in the software field for about seven years before branching out to, um, I, I was this, the head of business development for a bank called Euro Pacific Bank for about five years. Um, I'm the founder and host, like Steve said, of the Liberty Entrepreneurs podcast. I have a virtual assistant business called Liberty Virtual Assistants where I help digital entrepreneurs and digital nomads hire Filipino assistants, um, high skill, low wage assistants. And I, my latest project is Steam Smarter. Basically it's a blockchain analytics and reporting bot that runs on top of the Steam blockchain. And we'll get into that a little bit later. So. What is cryptocurrency cash flow? You know, I've been in cryptocurrencies since about 2011 is when I learned about them. 2012 is when I started studying them. And 2013 is whenever I got active. And I would say I'm active daily in the community at this point. Blogging something, commenting, you know, talking to someone who's a cryptocurrency entrepreneur, blockchain entrepreneur. And um, one criticism that I tend to hear is, but you can't cash flow it. You know, Warren Buffett comes out and he says the same thing about gold. Bitcoin stinks because you can't cash flow it. Well, that's just not correct. And I hope at the end of this presentation, you walk away with at least four ideas on how to cash flow your cryptocurrency. So what is cash flow? Cash flow is when you're able to make additional revenue off of the capital that you already have, right? As opposed to capital gains, which is you're just buying and holding or hodling those coins, hoping the value goes up so that you can sell it to someone else, right? Earn coins from the coins you already own. And like I said, we'll go over about four ways to do that. It's mostly passive. It doesn't require frequent work. This isn't you getting different types of leads or closing sales or building a business like you would traditionally. And you retain your upside on the coin price so that you don't lose that upward, you know, we're in a bullish market in cryptocurrency just in general right now. You're not going to lose your exposure to the cryptocurrency price itself. Meaning that in all of the methods and all of the ways that I'm going to present that you can cash flow, if the coin price goes up, you're not missing out on that. We don't want FOMO here. <laughs> all right. That's going to be you. <laughs> so. Three reasons that I think you should care about cryptocurrency cash flow. One is, in my opinion, it's less work than building a real business. An SEO business, a drop shipping business. If you've got capital to put to work, why spend it creating this entire business if you can create cash flow to sustain your life without having to build the business, right? It's like, why not invest smarter and not work harder? It takes less time and less stress than renting out property in the physical world. You know, I have, a, I have a saying that I want to own digital property and rent physical property. It's way easier to travel around the world as a digital nomad and rent awesome Airbnbs and sell a little crypto for the local currency and not be tied down to the physical world, the, the taxes of physical property, the insurance, like having to find renters and what happens if they don't pay, right? These are all problems that honestly I don't want to deal with. And so you don't have to deal with them in these cryptocurrency cash flowing opportunities. And like I said earlier, you're still going to make money 
on your money, right? So even if your coin price isn't going up, let's say you had Bitcoin and it just stayed at $10,000. Well, what if you were making a couple hundred dollars a month and Bitcoin just stayed at $10,000, right? You're still bringing in revenue. You're still bringing in income without thinking like, oh man, I wish, you know, come on, cryptocurrency, come on, Bitcoin, move up, go somewhere. Like, I need to sell this later. It's not necessary. So, you know, I think those, for me personally, less work, less time, and more money, those are very appealing. Okay, so now we're getting into it. Four ways to cash flow your crypto. These are what we're going to go over. One is receiving airdrops and forks. Does anyone know what a fork is, or has anyone been a part of a fork? All right. Hosting masternodes. How about masternodes? Anyone heard of masternodes? All right. Staking coin for dividends. This is similar to stocks. Anyone having staking coins that they're getting paid out on? All right, just a couple. And then this is my favorite, and probably the, less under, the least understood, is delegating your social influence. Anyone have any clue what that is? Delegating social influence. Yes, I stumped the entire crowd. We're good. All right. So, let's go about airdrops first. An airdrop is basically when a cryptocurrency company wants to develop a new app, but there's always a problem. You have to distribute your token somehow. Some, in, in some cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, it all goes to the miners. They distribute all the tokens to the miners, right? In other cryptocurrencies, some of it goes to the miners and some of it goes to influencers. Or s it, it, they have different ways to pay out. Whenever a new company wants to distribute their new cryptocurrency, they have a couple options. They can ICO. I'm sure everyone's heard of ICO, where everybody rushes in at the same time and sends their Ethereum and hopefully they get part of that new coin. But what's becoming really popular is that when a new company wants to build its community, aka distribute its coins to its users, oftentimes they will give everyone who owns, let's say, Ethereum, some of their token. And we've seen this in several blockchains so far. Mainly airdrops are done by the platform blockchains. And whenever I say platform blockchains, I'm talking about Ethereum, you know, EOS is coming in June, and for instance, NEO, some others are like Stratus or Lisk. Um, I think Cardano is one of the most recent. But basically, if you hold these tokens, you show that you're part of this blockchain community and people want to develop an app and a token and give you a little bit to try to entice you to come and use their product at least for free at first. And maybe you like it, maybe you don't, but you're not out anything because you got free tokens. So that's one way that you can get tokens. Um, forks. We've heard a lot about forks. I don't know how many people are, you know, keep up day to day in the crypto space here, but fork is basically when a crypto community, most notably, let's say Bitcoin, the community starts infighting and they start disagreeing on the vision and the roadmap for how they want to develop their blockchain. Remember, blockchains are just code. I was told to let this go. So what happens? What happens whenever you have a community and it disagrees fundamentally on something? Right? Well, you need a way, you need, you need arbitration. You need a way to settle your differences. And in some of these cryptocurrencies, you don't have that. Right? You don't have any way to settle your, your, your differences. B Bitcoin and Ethereum are most notable. Has anyone heard of Ethereum Classic? And what about Bitcoin Cash? If you're holding Ethereum or you're holding Bitcoin Cash, Whenever the fork, or basically whenever part of their community said, we no longer belong with you, we are changing the code for your blockchain, and we're going to fork off, and we're our own community now, and we have our own blockchain, you got, free, you got new free tokens, basically. If you had 100 Bitcoin whenever it forked, then you had 100 Bitcoin cash. It didn't require anything. All right, proof of stake. So there's a couple different types of blockchains, and I'm not going to get into these details, but there's like proof of work, which are what you've heard of miners, Ethereum, Bitcoin, stuff like that. And then there's proof of stake coins. 
The 20 second on proof of stake is that instead of having these huge mining facilities around the world to secure the blockchain, you stake your coins or it's kind of like a bond or a CD. You kind of tie them up for an amount of time. And that's what secures the blockchain. In some of these proof of stake coins, if you're willing to sacrifice the, the time right, that you can have to spend your tokens, said differently, if you're willing to lock your tokens up for, a, for an amount of time, maybe it's just a day, maybe it's a minute, maybe you can unlock it whenever you want, maybe you have to sign in for six months of staking, meaning that you can't move your coins for six months, but during those six months, you're gonna be paid out, right? And so you're basically, when you stake your coins, to that blockchain, you're offering a mechanism for the blockchain and that community to secure itself and add strength so it's harder to hijack. And it, for that service, you get rewarded with some of the new tokens that get created. So think about this. In Bitcoin, where, who gets the new tokens that are created every day? Just shout it out. The miners do, right. What if we could use a more intelligent inflation system or a system of sharing the new tokens that get created every day, every minute, every hour, whatever, and we could incentivize people to do different things rather than just mining. In the Bitcoin network, in the Bitcoin blockchain, you get incentivized to do one thing really, and that is to mine Bitcoins, right? That's how you get new Bitcoins. In other blockchains like Neo, Pivx, and coming next month, one a supply chain, one of my favorite called VeChain. If you stake your tokens, basically just keep them in your wallet, then you get paid out more tokens, and you just collect them. I mean, it's literally like having a stock, like having Apple stock or IBM stock, and then giving you more stock over time. It's no different than staking tokens, except that unlike a stock you don't actually know that you own that stock. It's in a clearinghouse somewhere in some big bank, probably in the United States. With cryptocurrencies, you know that you own those tokens and that, you're, and that whenever you get paid out, it comes instantly to your wallet. You know, this is, this is one of the easiest, I think, to comprehend and one of the easiest to like action because NEO is my favorite, personally, for this. I have staked NEO. You just download the NEO wallet you shift some of your Bitcoins, for instance, into NEO, and then you'll just continually, slowly get payouts. And I don't have a percentage APR for what those payouts are, but I'm sure you can look it up. All right, master nodes. So I know I keep going back to this Bitcoin example is because you know, it's the first and it's currently the biggest and baddest. Um, in Bitcoin, you can run a node, but you don't get paid for it. Running a node means that you, you run the Bitcoin software on your computer and it takes up your time and it takes up your, your electricity and it takes up your focus. And why do you want to do this if you're not getting paid? There are some blockchains that if you're willing to do that effort and run a node, then they're just going to pay you. They pay you out for the service. Again, it comes back to what are you giving the blockchain and what is the blockchain giving you, right? In this sense, what you're offering the blockchain is additional security. The more nodes that you have in your network, the more decentralized and the more secure you are. So there are some intelligent blockchains that pay out some of the new coins by two people who run nodes, right? It's really that simple. You're offering security, you're offering a service, they're paying you out for it. It's not that different than staking, but master nodes typically require a minimum amount of coins to stake and a minimum time that you stake those coins. A little bit off topic here, I also find it interesting that master nodes, they basically show that you bought in to a community. Whenever you hear blockchain from now on, think, think about the term community as well because that's where this is going. I've, you know, I've been in this space since 2011 and the longer that I'm in it, the more I realize that a blockchain is only there to support a community. The community is where the value is, right? The blockchain is just the way for a community to record history. So whenever you buy in, let's say Dash, 
I can remember when a Dash Master Note called $7,000 and I didn't buy one, and I kicked myself frequently for it. But right now, a Dash Master Note costs 1,000 Dash, and that's about $800 a Dash, so it's an $800,000 investment now. January of last year, that was about a five to $7,000 investment. And it pays you seven Dash every single month, right? So think about this. If you were privy to the idea of masternodes and you bought a coin that was masternode compliant and you started staking it and back then you were getting out seven dash a month but seven times seven you know that's not that much cash now that dash has rallied to eight hundred dollars that smallish investment if you were educating yourself is now turned into seven times eight hundred not bad you could definitely do a bit of traveling live really well in Chiang Mai on that type of cash. But remember, this master nodes do require some type of setup, right? You, you do need to have some type of IT background. If not, there are servers, services out there that can help you set it up. But this is going to be one of the more um, upfront intensive ways to cash flow your cryptocurrency. There's a really cool website, masternodes.pro, that you'll want to go to. This is basically a website that lists every single masternode coin and blockchain that we currently know of. It says what the current price of the token is, what the current, um, how many of the tokens it takes to create a masternode, what the percentage payout they want to offer, um, how much that means per year for you if you own one masternode, how much per month that you get paid out. If you're interested in this type of cash flow, basically you're, you know, you're just setting up a server and instead of running websites, you're running a blockchain and you get paid out on it. But it's masternodes.pro. Some notable coins here. We've talked about Dash. Uh, Pivx is another one. Pivx is a clone of Dash, so you'll see that. I don't know how many, how many tokens Pivx takes, but... Okay. This, this has got to be my favorite, and in my opinion, the best APR, the best return that you can find for cash flow in the entire crypto space right now. So we're talking about delegating your social influence, and this is really only one blockchain that currently allows you to do this, um, and that blockchain is Steam. There are some competitors to Steam that could give this opportunity, but they're so small that Steam is the really the only blockchain in town that allows you to delegate your social influence. But what is social influence? And what is social influence in terms of blockchain? Has anyone heard of Steam? Oh, wow. Okay. Jesus. Has anyone posted on Steam? And has anyone made more than $10 on Steam? Okay. Cool. So basically, Steam, we're building on this idea of staking your coins, right? To stake your coins means that you're showing that you're a part of the community. You're showing that I'm going to put this capital that I have. I could invest this capital in anything. Let's say you have $10,000. You, you could buy clothes with that. You could go out and blow it on food and alcohol. You could invest in stocks. You could buy cryptocurrencies, right? You could do anything you want with that $10,000. If you happen to buy something like Steam, and then you stake it or you lock it in, right, to secure the network, then there's ways that you can be rewarded for proving that you're part of that community. In Steam, whenever you stake your tokens, they call it Steam Power, right? Think of like a little engine or something. Whenever you stake your Steam tokens and turn it into Steam power, what that does, I know it's getting a little bit complicated, and I will stop after this and take questions because I think this is your best opportunity. What happens is whenever you power up your Steam tokens, you go on the platform, and Steam is basically a social media site. Think about Facebook, except when you upvote someone, there's a dollar reward associated to it that you don't pay but you tell the blockchain to allocate out of the new coins being created. And that, you know, I've been using the word inflation for that. For me, inflation is 
an expansion of the money supply. It means new tokens are being added to the current base of existing tokens. Well, if there's new tokens being created, who gets them? And why isn't it you? Right? If there's new money being created, somebody's getting it every single day. And if you're not getting it, then figure out how to get it. And that's what I hope I'm doing here. So whenever, whenever I log on to Steam, maybe I'll, maybe I'll post something and somebody will upvote me. Maybe it will be worth one cent. You know, maybe they have 100 Steam power. And then somebody else will upvote me. Maybe it will be four cents right, that I'm going to get paid out in new Steam. And maybe they have 200 Steam power. And then somebody comes by and upvotes me and it's worth $50 because maybe they have 30,000 Steam. Right? The more steam you have, the more ability to influence the blockchain payouts. All right? I, what you can do is you can delegate or lease away that influence. So let's say you have 10,000 steam power. And I don't have exact calculations here, but I think that that's probably going to give you about a $5 upvote on steam. So if you have 10,000 steam power, you're going to go on a Steam, and there's an article about kittens riding unicorns that you just freaking love, and you're going to upvote it, and you're going to allocate $5 of the new available Steam that's going to come from the blockchain inflation to that author. It doesn't come out of your pocket. Other people are willing to pay to temporarily use your blockchain or your social influence to bolster their own account and to build and reward and support their own community and following. All right, I'll say that again. On the Steam blockchain, if you have Steam power, basically you've staked your Steam tokens, which gives you influence over the inflation. I know this is complicated. Other people are willing to rent that from you, kind of like renting a house from someone, right? Or kind of like renting a car from someone or paying somebody to come and blog for you. Somebody is willing to pay you to temporarily utilize your steam power. And why would they do that? Why would they do that? Shout it out. They can have more social influence. They can build more credibility. It could be a greater reach as well. And think about this. So I have a podcast. If I, if I post my podcast on Facebook and people are commenting and they're loving it, how can I give back? How do I give back to these people? Do I, like, send them a T-shirt? No, I'm not in a T-shirt business. On Steam, I upvote them. There's 10 cents for you. There's 25 cents for you. Oh, man. Th this, this chick had like an awesome reply to my podcast, how it like changed her life. Here's like a $10 upvote for you, right? This guy shared it with all these people. Here's a $5 upvote for you. It's not coming out of my pocket. It's because I have so much influence in, in, the, in the community that I can direct that steam inflation to anyone that I want. So if you come in and you have a brand new podcast, and you don't know, I mean, you don't have a lot of SP, you can rent it from me and start paying out your community. Would you be more or less inclined to comment, follow, share somebody's podcast that maybe you can make a couple bucks for, especially if you're around the world and all it takes a couple bucks to live a day? Or would you do it on Facebook where maybe you get 10 likes? <laughs> Put those 10 likes in the bank, all right? So I'm going to go into a little bit detail, so just about the idea of STEAM and STEAM delegation, because I'm going to get into a little bit more nitty gritty after this on, on step by step how you do this, how you could do this right now. Yes? Right. There is a lot of inflation for that. Right. There is another thing is, uh, I don't know yet how much uh, Steam community takes on uh, the shares about like what they create the inflation rates 
how much like if it's 20 percent for them or other right. stuff so, yeah. so so the question was or the, or the the statement was if there's new coins being created aka there's inflation and somebody's getting them well somebody's paying for that there's no free lunch and that's exactly right inflation typically dilutes the purchasing power of the of your currency even think about like government currencies or fiat currencies if you're holding u.s dollars in your pocket and the government is printing a whole bunch of new dollars, then the dollars that you have in your pocket are theoretically becoming less valuable. More money in the system chasing the same amount of goods, then your money is going to devalue. And the same thing in cryptocurrencies as well. If you're holding Bitcoin, guess what? There's new Bitcoins being printed or being mined, being created every single day. And if no new capital came into Bitcoin, then yes, your Bitcoins would be worth less. But since we're in such a bullish market right now in this new e-commodity asset class, there's so much more money coming into these cryptocurrencies than new, co than new coins being created every day that the value can still rise even with inflation. So even, even when you're paying other people out, from the inflation, then it doesn't mean that everyone else is losing purchasing power because if, you know, if more money is coming in and more people are buying steam, which is currently what's happening, then you can still keep your same amount of purchasing power while having new coins come into the system. And this is the same for every coin for the most part, right? Unless, unless a coin is 100% pre-mined, which there's only like Augur and I don't know some of the other ones, but every coin that you hold and every dollar bill and every physical token that you hold that you keep in your pocket is, is being devalued by your government every single day. The difference is with the blockchain, you know exactly what the inflation rate is and you know exactly how many new coins are being created. Whereas when you hold government currencies, you have no clue how much new currency is being created or who it's going to. You don't know the beneficiaries. With blockchain-based economic systems, you know both. You can tell who the new coins are going to, how many are going to them, and how many coins in general are being created new every day, every hour, every month, etc. Great question. All right, let's keep. All right, so this is literally the step-by-steps on, on how you figure out minnowbooster.net. Minnowbooster.net is the basically the exchange that you use to delegate your Steam power out to someone else. I think Steam is around $6 a coin right now. So let's take some of these examples. You'll see that you literally just go to minnowbooster.net. And I recommend, maybe not now, but now is probably fine. You go to minnowbooster.net and you click on the marketplace. These are people who are actively trying to buy steam power from someone else. This guy wants make a well. That's just a user. Who knows who it is? He wants 7,615 steam power. He wants it for four weeks. He's willing to pay 250 steam for it. The exchange takes a cut of 10%, so you get 225 steam. This is a, an annual return of 29.5%. So to give you an idea, can somebody crunch the math for me? Oh wait, I did on the next slide. <laughs> right? That's about, f so make a well, user make a well. This is a big one, right? He wants 40, about 47,000 US dollars. You don't give him your coins because they're staked, they're staked to your name, they're protected. You just offer him or her, make a will, the influence to use your coins. This is one of the greatest things about this method, is that you, if for any reason that you want to reclaim your power, your influence, you just reclaim it at any time, any day, any second. There's nobody that can like take this from you. It's not like when you go to a bank and you offer, like you give a loan to someone, and you're like, oh, I hope they pay me, right? It's not like you have a rental property, and you're like, oh God, I hope they pay me my rent. Who cares? Because there's smart contracts in the blockchain economy, and a, blo a smart contract wraps around this. I send 7,615 steam power. Make a well sends 225 steam, and every single day I get paid out a small little dividend. So right now, for instance, I'm making like 18 steam per day because I've delegated and I've done some of these, and every single day I'm making around 18 steam. I don't know what 18 times 6 is, but you know, it's, it's not bad. 
There's, so maybe you don't have $47,000 to delegate out. Well, there's people that are looking for 300 SP, right? 300, oh, I use the example 487. Somebody wants, again, 487 SP. Maybe that's going to increase their upvote by a dollar, let's say. Whenever you lease this SP from me, your dollar, I mean, your upvote is going to be worth instead of two cents. Now you can give out a dollar and two cents. That's going to attract a lot more people to your blog or your podcast or those traveling around the world videos or whatever you've got. You can more quickly build an audience and a community around you. You know, that, that book, A Thousand True Fans, well, this is a great way to like start reaching out to those fans because you can, it's, it's a two-way value. You can reward them back. This is a person called Minnow Votes. They want about $3,000 US dollars worth of steam power. This is only a two-week contract and they're willing to pay 12 steam for it over two weeks. So, you know, you're looking at a little under one steam per day. Not a lot, but it's only for a week, two weeks, excuse me. And that's 41.9%. People that, people that lease, uh, I mean, people that buy houses hope to get, you know, they hope to get 10 to 20% per year. And that's before you start factoring out what happens if your dishwasher breaks or you got to pay the guy to mow the lawn and you got to get your roof fixed and what, hap what happens if your renters don't pay you and this insurance and stuff like that. So I recommend everyone check out minnowbooster.net. For me, it's the best and the easiest way to start cash flowing. It, it's my favorite way. All right, so let's wrap up here. Yes. Okay, the, great question. So the question was, what about a bot system that you just upvote all your own posts, right? You go and you're like, hey, I love cats, and you just vote up your own post, and if you rent some steam power for me, let's say a dollar's worth, then every time you vote for yourself, it's a dollar, 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 and over time, it'll go down in power, but it builds back up just like a health bar. If anybody played like Mario or something growing up, you know, you get hit, you lose a couple hearts, and it builds back up over time. That, that's how your voting happens. But you could, you very well could. You could, and there are people that do that. You could write a bot, and this isn't too passive at first, but you can write a bot that just goes through on the Steam blockchain and literally just upvotes all of your own posts and all of your own comments, and it, you, know, you just make that money. It's frowned upon because that's, remember, you're part of a community, so people look for that type of stuff, and then they can come in and downvote you, which takes away your rewards. So there is a, a good and bad actor you know, uh, relationship there on the blockchain and on, in the Steam community. But yeah, really good idea, if you can do it. You got to write the bot, and then you got to keep, keep your reputation high enough where guys don't come through and they're like, oh, look at Bob. He just wants to upvote himself. What a jerk. Downvote, downvote, downvote. <laughs> All right, so we've got receiving new coins via airdrops and forks. We've got hosting masternodes. Um, we've got staking coins for dividends, kind of like everyone's familiar with stocks. And then we've got delegating your social influence specifically on the Steam blockchain so that you can passively cash flow, you know, make that couple grand that you need every month so you can kick the job goodbye, travel the world, live where you want to, find some places. If you're making four grand a month in passive, passive crypto cash flow, just go and find those places around the world where you can live on two to four thousand dollars a month and you don't have to work. So how to get started and what are your next steps? Well, I think you need to you know, go research some of this stuff in a little bit more detail and maybe subscribe to my podcast, wink, wink, and you can start figuring out what is your best option. You know, if you are IT savvy, maybe create a masternode is best for you. If you've already got capital, if you already have ten dollars to $20,000 at your disposal, and it's not invested, you could buy Steam and you could start staking it and delegating it, right? You could buy Ethereum and hope that there's more forks and more airdrops and you could start cash flowing that way. Then you need to buy the relevant cryptocurrency. You have to have the token to interact with the blockchain to get started. You can't do this without buying into that community token. You also need to implement the strategy. This is why I didn't go into great detail on some of the other ones like masternodes because I've never set up a masternode. For me, it wasn't my best strategy, right? I figured out that I could have a much easier, faster, and better reward with Steam. 
And then you need to start collecting those coins. So that's it. Uh, if you want to stay connected, learn more about entrepreneurship on the blockchain, you can follow me on Twitter, at Ash Oro. Uh, you can scan these with your phone, and it'll take you, I think that one takes you to my website. It may just be the RSS feed for the podcast. And you can download this presentation by scanning the other QR code. I will open it up to questions now. I think we had one back in the back. Oh, let, let's wait on the microphone here. Hi, so I just want to ask about the economics of airdrops and forks. I guess mostly forks, because let's say that when Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash forked, hundreds of millions of dollars just kind of appeared overnight. Like, and how does that, like, where does that valuation come from? And like, that just, I mean, from uh, like my point of view, I don't know like how sustainable that is. Right. I'll be interested to hear like your opinion on it. Thank sure. you. Sure. Yep. Um, so just because new cryptocurrencies are created, it doesn't mean that they have any value. All right, I could create Ashcoin and come up to you and say, hey, buy my Ashcoin. They're a thousand dollars a piece. And you'd be like, no, I get your Ash coins out of here. I don't want that, right? I'd rather buy Bitcoin or Ethereum or something. So whenever a new coin is created, it has no value until somebody's willing to buy it. And so whenever Bitcoin Cash came out, everybody had all this Bitcoin Cash all of a sudden. If nobody wanted to buy it, then the value would have been zero. But there were intrinsic things about Bitcoin Cash, particularly, we're getting into details here, but particularly the larger block size that people thought were more valuable than the old Bitcoin. And so they were willing to sell some other coin and buy this new coin because they thought subjectively that it had more value than the coin that they were selling. So if like Bitcoin you know, gold or something comes out and nobody wants it, then the coin's just not going to have any value. You're still going to have those Bitcoin golds in your wallet, but, you know, nobody's going to buy them. And just for the record, Bitcoin gold's probably a couple hundred bucks right now. So, and that was another Bitcoin fork. We've had Bitcoin cash, Bitcoin gold, Bitcoin diamond, Bi you know, I don't know all the, any other questions? Yes. Um, you said about NEO paying out dividends. Does it have to be in a particular like Neo wallet, like if it's just on an exchange, do you not get the same like dividend payouts? Yeah, so the question is, if you have your Neo, which is one of the staking coins, um, if you have it on exchange, do they pay you out? It's a good question. I, I, honestly, I don't know. Um, some do, and then some may not. You know, just like if you had Bitcoin on an exchange and the Bitcoin cash fork came, you know, when you have your coins on an exchange, you don't really own your coins anymore. They do. And so they have the option to pay you out or not. Uh, if you're going to implement any of these strategies, I recommend you having your coins in a wallet that you control. Yeah. And just another comment. I think uh, yours.org is similar to Steam it, but with Bitcoin Cash rather than Steam. Yeah. So yours.org uh, was created by a guy named Ryan X. Charles. I interviewed on the podcast maybe around episode 36 or so. Um, but they don't have their own blockchain, whereas Steam has the inflation that pays out, pays out. They just incorporated their social uh, media, their social network that just incorporated micropayments of other, like of Bitcoin Cash. So when you upvote someone on yours.org, you are actually paying out of your own pocket to, you know, say thank you and give somebody some of your cash when you upvote. We got another question over here, I think. Yes. So the question was, are there any negative effects of loaning out your Steam power using MinnowBooster.net? Um, I think there's one, and that is that they take 10% as, as the exchange, basically, as their cut for anybody that they match you with. But what you get in return is they create the smart contract that you and the other person come into. And so you never have to worry about them not paying. They pay every single time because MinaBooster requires them to front 100% of the Steam currency at the time that the contract is created. Yep. Any other questions? Yes. Yeah, I wonder who, for whom is it better to try to earn Steam versus buying it and renting it out? All right, great question. Nice to see you again. I didn't go over uh, how you can make Steam as a content creator, and I guess I will just really quick. I know I'm over, so I'll, okay. Um, so on the Steam blockchain, 
is if you go to steamit.com, that's another website that you should familiar yourself with. It's not, it, it needs some work. I mean, you're not going to log into steamit.com and it's not going to look like a Reddit or a Facebook or something like this. It's still very young. Social media on the blockchain, this was the first social media platform ever created for a blockchain. So it's still a little rough around the edges. But you can go and write your blog. You can go and s share your podcast, right? And if people like what you're doing, they'll upvote you and pay you out. You can even upvote comments. So if there's an author that you really like, then you can leave a really awesome comment. And if they find it valuable or if the community finds it valuable, you know, those upvotes are coming and uh, you'll get paid out of some of the steam. You can, when you get paid out that steam as a content creator or a curator, you could go back to Minnow Booster and delegate it out. Or you just keep staking it, increasing your own influence and voting for your community, voting for yourself every once in a while and doing that, right? There are some apps that have been built on Steam, one most notably called steamvoter.com, steamvoter.com, which is an auto vote feature. So if there's some authors that you really, really like, then you go and create an account on Steam Voter, and every single post that that author creates, you just automatically upvote it through this app, right? And so that's kind of like a little standard basic income there, but it's voluntary from a blockchain without having to redistribute wealth through the force of the government. Any other, any other questions? Yes. So does it make sense to move all of your content, all the, all the copy to Steam, just, just to have it there? Uh, right. So the question was, is the incentive there to just repurpose or just put all of your content that you create over to Steam? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think you do it all. And there are bots out there that crawl the web and it's like, hey, this is original content. We didn't find it anywhere else on the internet, right? And they'll post it, and that's like the Steam community really likes that, right? Because it's like, oh, I'm, curate, I'm creating content just for my people in this community. There's also other bots, like plagiarism bots, right? We all heard about plagiarism in high school and college, and we had like the old teacher up there trying to figure it out. Well, now there's just bots that crawl the web. If you post a copy of my podcast on, under your account, guess what? The plagiarism bot is gonna come and say, hey, you know, we gave you a down vote because this isn't your original work. Or they'll just give you warnings like, hey, we found this out on the internet, and you know, if it's yours, good. If it's not, then please give credit to this website. So, uh, so a really awesome website is steamtools.com. I think it's steamtools.com, where it'll list pretty much every bot and every app that has been developed on the Steam blockchain. And I didn't share it right now, actually, um, Anyways, if you go to, uh, I wish I'd have created a resource page here, but it's steamtools.com. All right, any other questions to wrap up here? Got one here. Where are we at? Oh, okay, yep, go ahead. I just, uh, I'm unclear about the name of that site, somethingbooster.net. Yeah, so it's Minnow Booster. Minnow Booster. Yeah, M-I-N-N-O-W. It's right up here at the top. Yeah, but I can't see that. <laughs> Okay, yeah, yeah. minnowbooster.net. Uh, and and if, you, if you download the slides, it'll be in there as well. Yeah. All right. Yep, yeah, we got a question right here. Yeah, I'll, I'll post this in the, uh, in the Facebook group. And I'm going to take a quick Oscar selfie here. So if everybody can, like, give me a good thumbs up, I think that'd be freaking awesome. All right, ready? Give me a thumbs up. One two, three. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Okay, well, that was it. I'm Ash Orr. Thanks so much for letting me speak today. <laughs>